goodness, with face, pat, and tiz. Let's get right off into the crazy shit. Uh, I think it's time, since it's been a week, um, a lot's been going on in the world. Yeah. So, Pat, I think it's time. It is time. It is time for, because I feel good. Everybody else feel good. You know what I'm saying? You know what I like? Fuckery. So it's time for the good and fuckery, y'all. Good and fuckery. Good and fuckery. Good and fuckery. Good, 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 Every time I say good and fuckery, my arms good go up like this. Y'all can't see it. Good because I'll be like fuckery. in this. Good and fuckery. Yeah, so, yeah. All right. <laughs> good and fuckery. So, yeah, I have accumulated a lot on the good and fuckery list this week. But so we, we, we're going to get right into it. Um, first off, if, by the time y'all hear this, as we are recording, this is now the locks versus the dip set versus I said that all wrong, but the locks versus dip set versus pretty much because I said the dip set, but <laughs> either way, either way, either way, it's going on right now, whatever. I'm kindly uh, monitoring it, it and whatnot. Ah, can't talk right now. Can't talk at all. Where's my coat? Not the soda. The soda. What you say? The soda. I needed to drink because I soda. couldn't really talk right now. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, right into the list. So um, there's a Malcolm X series that's about to be coming out, and it's produced Yo, by Yasa. Dog. Yeah, I'm glad he said it because I probably would have butchered her name. But I Eliasa talked about it on the positive so black news um, on the fake episode 37. On the fake one? Oh, well, we're bringing it back up. I just wanted to inform people it's happening. It's a real thing, y'all. It's going I on. Told y'all. By any chance, you got the channel. That was what I did now. Mm hmm. You said, How you gonna <laughs> say, Oh, uh, Humble J. Hibbert? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, that's some nigga shit there. It is. Nigga just say it, just say, yeah. Don't be treating me like I'm a wife, nigga. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> oh, I would never disrespect you like that, man. No. <laughs> no. And you know that was just, the, mm -hmm. that, that was the husband. Uh -huh. I, I would never disrespect. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. My bad. This is so much was, stuff. <clears throat> Do you have the channel? Did you were you able to find the channel that is coming out on? No, I wasn't. I ain't, I see it. So see, me far, neither. I don't think because he's just saying that it's um it comes from what Sony Pictures Television TriStar Division or whatever. But I don't think they actually figured out where they're gonna actually put it on it yet. From what I've seen so far, but Ooh. yeah, once once we find out, you know, oh, we're gonna let y'all know. Mm hmm. I'm right. supposed to focus on his young life, so that should be dope. Oh yeah, oh yeah, mm -hmm. Michael Little, um, Malcolm Littles, Littles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's his name. You, you feeling okay like that? Mm, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to think face, about it. Like, face, you not hearing this shit? Yeah, it's I'm just, it's I'm just, just nigga, you I'm, here? I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> It's gonna be funny later on, anyway. All right, next fucker. <laughs> well, next good, I should say. Yo, is this movie that's out? Um, it's called Crazy Samurai, and it has like the longest fight sequence. It's like uh seventy seven minutes and a one take action film sequence or whatever. I am gonna find it, but it's like called Crazy Samurai four hundred versus one seven minutes. Mm. And there's a fight scene. So the movie is one, the whole movie is one take. Like it's mm. a one shot movie. Mm -mm. Yeah, they say the um one take action film sequence. That's how they said it, pretty much. And it was like the whole thing is 77 minutes, or you mean like during the, whole, the movie? The during whole the movie, fight, there's an action sequence. During the movie, there's a 77 minute long action sequence. So how long fight. is the movie? That's why I need to find out. But <laughs> it's in the process. Um, 
the uh what is it art streamer huh? blah, 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 blah. skip all that skip all that um the highlight yeah it just says the highlight of the film is seven minute is a seven minute action long sequence so it didn't really tell me exactly how long the movie is pretty much um director yuji shumamura yeah this is gonna be fun trying to say these names man <laughs> And uh, <clears throat> said uh, he's crafted an ep uh, epic achievement in action choreography. Um, and uh, this is Sakaguchi is the guy who plays Maya Moto. Sakaguchi? Yeah, that's the name of the guy. He plays the legendary swordsman named Maya Moto Musashi in 1584 to 1645. Whatever. A warrior undefeated in at least... 60 documented duels pretty much so that's the whole gist of the movie pretty much if y'all find out about it um go ahead and tag the link and put it in the comments so i can find out where it is but it is a 77 minute uh, sword fight scene and, and i want to see it <laughs> I, that's I crazy. See it. i've seen the trailers and i've seen like some of the back behind the scenes of how it, how they're going to do it or whatever but yeah i want to see how they pull it off I want to see all of the fuck ups in that scene because there's got to be some some bloopers that just had to make it in just because they was like, "Well, we can't cut." <laughs> it's gonna be in the behind the scenes, and there's gonna be two guys and one with his arm cut off laughing in the background. <laughs> yeah, this would happen like uh, earlier. <laughs> Good take, <laughs> Earl. <laughs> you go back. <laughs> Good take, Earl. That make me laugh. Mm -mm. I don't know who Earl is. <laughs> <laughs> so Earl everywhere, man. It is. Yeah. And even in the midst of world Earl. of the Miyamoto's. There's Miyamoto, there's Sagaguchi. And you there's know, Earl. There's you. <laughs> he hang right with them. That, that's that's right cool. there. Shamamoto <laughs> and Earl. He don't got no last name. Nope, just Earl. He got a name tag on some overalls, but nobody knows where he works. You don't know if he's an electrician or mechanic or what. He's just Earl. Call that nigga. I don't know what face over there whispering. He over there. I got my deep breath. Deep breath. Deep breath. Deep breath. Deep breath. Nah, I said they call that nigga E Boogie. Yeah, you got to put your mouth near the mic like that. Whatever you doing right there, just keep doing that. I don't know what you were saying. I thought you was over there making a beat. I was about to start jamming. <laughs> Yeah, got me ready to throw a fucking. Let me shut up. That's going to come off real crazy, even though I don't mean it that way. <laughs> it's going to be quiet. Oh, this is going to be a goofy night. Right. Oh, man. I, I'm telling you, man. I'm, okay. Let me just come clean with y'all out there, Pod Squad. I am exhausted. I am burnt out. I woke up right before this show. I went to sleep for an hour and then woke up right again. And then I'm still here. And I'm about to fall asleep again. But I'm making it. I just want y'all to know that, though. So when I seem a little goofy, a little loopy, a little off, it's because I am. I'm crazy as hell right now. Yes, they deserve to die. And I hope they burn in hell. <laughs> I, I knew it. I knew it. As soon as you cock your head off to the side and made that face, but it, it just man. popped in my head, man. I, don't, I think you were telepath. Bruh, it's, it's it's one of them, bro. It's one of them, bro. Mm -hmm. We make it by God, by the grace of God. Oh, Lord. <laughs> you seen them? You seen them, uh, Andrew? <laughs> It's a joke called those infomercials. It's like a uh, Fast 38, and they got the black dude screaming, selling like um, blessed, like handkerchiefs or something. And by the grace of God, come on, get your personal prayer package and your prayer cloth. The blood of Jesus prayer cloth. You can put it in your Bible. You can put it in your mantle. You can put it wherever. That's the Curtis Thomas. That's the dude we used to watch at uh, at uh, Juju Crib. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. At the end shit. of the day. 
Nigga come back home from the pool up, nigga be watching fucking Curtis <laughs> Thomas. <laughs> Cause God, <laughs> y'all look up Curtis Thomas. He was one of the. I don't know if he still come on, but that was one of the funniest shows on TV, boy. That that man be yelling for no reason with him big suits. Oh uh, yo, no TV yeah. pastors be acting up, man. And yeah, he had that big OJ Simpson head. <laughs> <laughs> my, my my parents they watch um there's this one pastor they watch right and they in the watching, morning they be watching Kearney and his voice is it is is he the dude that be sounding like a robot on Windows Boy and them guys be out there exposed and stuff <laughs> Nigga, like, what? like Hoochies and hoes. No, that sounds like Mr. from Color Purple Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> no what? man, it's, oh, I don't know. Man, my brother, and my sister would tell me though, but this is past they would no. listen to. And I swear to God, I swear, I thought he'd be cousin or something because he like these girls out there, they out there. <laughs> it sounded like he, he got one of those things, like he got a hole in the neck, like he got one of those things he put up to his neck. <laughs> he, got a, he got a uh sound a like, voice, like a voice box for like when yeah. you got a, a stoma or something. Yeah. He sound like he got the synth- he got the synthesizer thing on his mouth, whatever. <laughs> synthesizer. Nigga ain't got no goddamn vocoder on his neck. <laughs> he got like that if you take your love away from me, <laughs> hell no, nigga. Nigga girls out there I'm being done. Jezebels in the streets. <laughs> I don't know what dude you talk about, but that pastor sounds hilarious. That sounds like yeah, an, yeah. A, a great sermon to just listen to and laugh at. Yeah, let's go pass and knees. She is for the streets. (laughs) (laughs) You stupid as hell, bro. (laughs) What the fuck? (laughs) (laughs) Yo. Oh, man. My my brother's going to tell me who that is. My brother and my sister, I'll I'll be back with y'all with Pod Squad, but some of y'all probably already know. But let me get back to the good (laughs) fucker. I forgot all about we was in the middle of a segment, dude. I I, I think that we was talking. Just roll with it. I was over here just talking. Just all roll right. with it. Roll with it. Roll with it. Um, yeah. What was it? Uh, if y'all remember from the last good fuckery, I, I told y'all to stop eating, you know, Doritos and stuff for the Frito Lay workers that's striking. So they uh. As my son yeah. got a care package in the mail from his grandmother <laughs> with goddamn Doritos and Funyuns <laughs> and like everything Frito Lay make spicy Cheetos, <laughs> just all kinds of shit. Well, um, it's cool to do it now because they come to agreement. They're gonna have higher wages, pretty much. And um, good son, you eat in solidarity with the workers. Yeah, yeah. They say uh, <laughs> it gives all you you want members a 4% pay raise over two years and guarantees workers at least one day off each week. Um, I, I still think that's kind of eh, on the deal, but yeah, <clears throat> more than 500 of the 850 employees represented by the union went on strike July 5th, you know, saying it was a toxic environment and, uh, and you know, they gave up the the normal corporate PR explanation. You no, know, we feel very strongly that if we can reset the facility, we will address a lot of the staffing and overtime issues. Um, the uh, what is his name Fisher said. I don't. Know. It they did it, but it yeah they they're back in there. Um. <clears throat> Your face is throwing me off. <laughs> They're back in there. Because I don't know what the hell you trying to say. You just like... Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, because I was about to finish the rest of his statement, but it just sounds like a regular <laughs> corporate PR statement. And I mean, it's, the more I read it, I don't even care about the statement. <laughs> I don't, I don't <laughs> knock the microphone the down. I'm just happy but, they got but, something. Oh long- my god! But yeah, but uh, yeah. Each free to lay now they they got a pay raise pretty much. Next up, um, Michael B. Jordan is Superman still. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, when was he um, Superman in the first place? 
So it's been this, um, like in the comic book, social media world or whatever, to try to promote stuff, you know, you have celebrities time and time post something up and then they'll have a big spectacle about it within the comic book media outlets or whatever. So um, the, the idea was rejected a couple of times or whatever, but there's this version of Superman where in this universe, he's black and he becomes president and his name is like Val Zod or whatever. So he's like, I think the son of General Zod in that universe or whatever. And Michael B. Jordan wants to play him. So he's actually producing it himself. He probably got some people backing him up, but it's supposed to go for um, right. you know, HBO Max. Oh, what'd you say, Face? Could be time to turn back him. You said what? Who's back him? Could be Tyler Perry. Oh, well, that could be. Hey, you got the big, big studio for it or whatever. Yeah, but the, the resources. My, I'm. I'll say. Uh, I'm kind of conflicted because I'm not really for the. All right, let's have a black version of every white superhero or whatever and i'm really for the hey this just make n- new superheroes that just happen to be black you know instead of like you know it's <clears throat> i think since um since since the miles morales or whatever i've been seeing an uprise of like all right this is the black version of iron man this is the black version of Batman. This is a black version of Superman. They've been having a bunch of black versions of Superman pretty much, but um, and I'm like, hey, why don't we just make new black characters? Pretty much. But I am for black people producing their own stuff. So if he wants to be Superman he, and I, I am for like, hey, not waiting for Hollywood to do stuff for you or whatever, go ahead and do it. You want to be Superman? Because if I wanted to be Superman and I had the, the 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 protection team to do it, guess what I'm doing? So I'm all for that. So he um so they redoing the whole story of Superman. No, it's um in comic books from time to time or whatever. They they just have writers. They'll just write their own flip on a on a character. So that's what this that's is. It's the, like the Joker movie. It's like it ain't necessarily part of no universe or nothing. It's just yeah. This person yeah. wanted to do a movie with Superman. And he wants to put Michael B. Jordan as a Superman. Yeah, it's it's really is it's really was a comic book series. I believe it was called Earth Two. Um, I have to go back to it where Val's side because I'm not really a DC head, mm-hmm. but DC has a whole bunch of different universes and each universe is a flip of the same thing pretty much in one universe instead of batman um bruce wayne being batman his father ends up being batman or whatever um and and instead of uh kal-el clark kent comes to earth this dude val zai comes to earth and he's actually black and he's actually ends up being powerful and you know black absorbed sun anyway and that's the basis of superman's powers and all that stuff so that um valzad has always been a character um like in i would say probably in the past maybe 10 15 years or whatever um but michael b jordan he found out about the character he wanted to do a movie about it and he picked it up pretty much so pretty dope. Yeah. all right i'll give it a shot I mean, hey, it's like, I'll say, I feel like Michael B. Jordan isn't a bad actor. I think he just sometimes be taking any damn role. Sometimes. He's and also I, he's also very much the same person in every role. Like, he's not very good yeah. at switching up. The, like, he's just him in every role. So That is true. Man. You can kind of start, like, his character start to bleed into each other. Like, nigga, are you Killmonger right now? Are you Superman? Are you? Who are you? <laughs> you, 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 Johnny Storm. Who are you? He gotta be. Well, I, I think if he's gonna be this Superman, because this Superman is the president, so he gotta have some type of change. He can't be Killmonger. You know what I'm saying? And be 
Obama. <clears throat> Obama man. That's basically it. You know, Obama what I'm saying? man. <laughs> That's pretty much. Say it. more. What you mean? He can't be killed, Martin Obama. You mean like because he can't black, be evil and being good? Black president Superman is basically Obama. That's pretty much it. That's 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 what I see when I uh, like read like. This part. You said what now, Faith? That nigga Obama got special powers. No, no. <laughs> I just feel like they they use the visage of Obama to like write parts of Balzad's character, pretty much since he becomes oh. a black super black president, pretty much or whatever. So. That's that's all I feel. I don't feel like it's that it, um, anything more than that, pretty much. But yeah, uh, I'm I'm curious, so I want to see how this turns out. Pretty much. I'll give it a shot. Yeah, that's it. So uh, it next, on TV. you said what now, please? I take it out when it come on the TV. Yeah, it's supposed to be on HBO Max. That's what it's supposed to be. We'll see when it comes out, though, because they just in talks about it right now. So. so next on the list, I don't know if anybody, I, I, it's been going around, but uh, the TikTok Black Dancer strike is still going on, and it oh, has come. Thing. Yes, it is a thing, and it is that's coming out with some hilarious outcomes because the white <laughs> dancers don't know what to do. <laughs> So yeah, whenever you have time, if you're bored, check it out. You know, just YouTube it. Hey, black black uh dancer TikTok strike or whatever, and you're gonna find some hilarious outcomes out there. Like they got <laughs> I seen this video of some white dancers. They trying to do a dance for um Meg the Stallion's bot um shit song, right? And that's pretty much it like every time like Meg the Stallion come out with a song the black TikTokers make a dance then somebody white cops it then it becomes big all over media pretty much all right so <laughs> I seen one and literally when when Meg says hands on my knees the girl <laughs> the white girls throw their hands up and go like this and I'm like that's that doesn't go with it at all. Like each time, like as soon as she says hands on my, like the dance does not go <clears> with it. <laughs> and every time that I seen, like what you want like them to a, do when they when she said hands on the knees, I know you. I want the them knees. to follow the direction. Like if you're gonna make yeah. a dance for a song, had insisted they, about them knees, guys. You better put them hands on them knees. Damn it, you know he wants. Yeah, that's knees disrespectful to, to Megan's knees. Shouts out to Megan's Sneaks. I say this on every episode. I don't understand. But, I mean, that come on, it's man. It's becoming a weird thing. It is. Not really. <laughs> but, anyway. <laughs> knees does a lot of work, man. You don't disrespect somebody needs to do that much work. Or maybe you do. In certain circumstances. I can't talk tonight for nothing. Anyway. Next on the list. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a struggle. It's been a little bit of a struggle. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> Long week. Uh, next on the list. Lizzo is tired of all of y'all saying that she killed someone while crowd surfing. Who said yeah. that? Uh, I don't know, man, but evidently they've been hitting her up on her own um, Twitter and everything, say <laughs> this rumor. I never heard I never heard of that. So that yeah. rumor, that rumor must have been local to her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It must have been just her but, people talking about it. I ain't know about that one. Well, you know, when you were a celebrity and you got social media, it's a cloud community around your social media or whatever of trolls and stuff just trying to figure out a way to get the time in the in the light or whatever. So a lot of times if you was I'm what I'm thinking, if you're a celebrity and you're really into social media, you're not seeing the world outside of what your social media is saying pretty much, especially if you're a big celebrity. A lot of times they're like isolated from the world just because maybe, you know, bad PR at the time or just paparazzi in general or whatever. So, but I thought it was hilarious. So I brought it up on the good and fuckery. <laughs> That's real. Well, Lizzo. Um, 
que el lugar. Pues, <laughs> I would hope not. That, that's very disturbing. Uh, I would think you would have heard about it if there was something real, though, that she really killed somebody by jumping on them. <laughs> I thought I was saying it on a, okay. multiple media or TMZ at least, but they gotta get yeah. a settlement. The visual, the like the mental picture of that is uh pretty fucking wild, yo. <laughs> like yeah! a WWE fight, like uh, <laughs> like a cartoon where you like the Jimmy Snuff and Fly. <laughs> Bust through the floor like Kool Aid. Oh yeah! Bodyguards gotta, you know, they gotta take that back, right? That's what they need to do. The bodyguard need a bodyguard. <clears throat> In that situation, probably. And if she throw her big body, God. Hope the bodyguard guard his body. <laughs> and after she hit you with that body. God. Body, 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 body. Gonna be some body bags. <laughs> <laughs> Zip them up, as Keisha would body, say. Too much, too much. All right. Um, good, some good. Um, Obama is now a minority owner of NBA's Africa business. Uh, the NBA launched its Africa entity in May and it values the business as a nearly $1 billion venture. Um, NBA Africa oversees the BAL, which is held in its inaugural season last May. And the investors include, oh, I'm going to butcher this name. That Kimbe Butombo. Okay, I might have had Grant Hill and yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Junior Bridgman. Okay, I, I, ain't, I ain't noticed it was Mutombo until I saw Mutombo at the end. I was like, oh, no, 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 <clears throat> no, 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 but that's no, cool. no, that's no, no. <laughs> um, the league said Obama would use his stake in the NBA <laughs> Africa to fund the Obama Foundation youth and leadership programs across Africa. So, yeah, there you go. <laughs> this nigga is weak in the background. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell is that sound? No, no, no. No, no, no. 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 You seen that guy go commercial, that nigga be smacking the letter down. And he's like, yeah. Oh, shit. No, no, no. That nigga just take off running oh, that Bigfoot. <laughs> Yo, Bigfoot no, people no, are no. hilarious. The nigga got like a size 20 foot. That should be hilarious, yo. Cause they just look like they running with olive oil feet. With and they got running with Ronald McDonald feet. Feet look like French baguettes. <laughs> oh shit! Mm-mm. Walking with skis all the time. Ski, <laughs> ski, ski. <laughs> I wonder what the hell Manute Bow doing. Uh, somewhere doing some type of philanthropy work, and his son plays in the NBA now. Yeah, okay, Manu, do you think? Yeah, yeah. His son, his son' name is Bobo. <laughs> oh yeah, Bobo, come here, Bobo. Bobo. That makes sense. Bobo, you know- make your feet feel fine. Bobo, they cost a dollar net and that. You know, I'm. I don't know what's more impressive that the sons in the NBA, or you just that you already knew what was Manute Bow doing at this time. So <laughs> I would have never really. I would know. I would have to Google. <laughs> Man, I, you know, I'm in the sports, bro. That's my shit. So sports, uh, I'm. I be. I be trying to stay up on it. Even if I don't catch the games, I try to stay at least. In the general, know what's going on in most sports because I, I don't know, I'm just addicted. Like, yeah. So what's going on in the world of cricket right now? That that I don't know. Yeah, you got me there. <laughs> <laughs> when we talking American Not sports. I got somewhat of a general idea, but uh, you started getting into cricket, uh, you lost me. 
I know I, I know what's going on in the Olympics right now, but I do want to watch some of them cricket games. They um, said I thought I would try. Because I will say cricket is fun as hell to watch. Like I like it. I, I prefer to watch cricket than uh baseball if I got a pick. Actually. I wouldn't want to watch nail one of the mother. I can respect it. Shit. Let me watch track and field or boxing in the Olympics. I you. But you know what I really like in the Olympics? I like that. I, I like synchronized swimming in the Olympics as well. I did not see that. Because you got to be, because you got to be on point, man. You got to be on point with each other because you can't see each other. You're in the water. You feel like the water, the waves of the water may make the other person do something different at a different time. So you got to be that much, that on point. You feel me? Y'all gotta be that in sync. Y'all chemistry gotta be there for us. Even that's true teamwork, yo. That's real. True. 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 Basketball, and, the other um, team sports, you feel me? Like them, them, that's one thing. You got another person working against you, but you got a natural element working against you. Water, <laughs> nigga. You can't beat water. <laughs> you can't beat water. <laughs> <laughs> you can't beat water. That's water. That's yeah, what that, um that shit Bruce Lee when you said. Touch it. Bruce Lee said you got to be like water. Yeah, water. Right. Be Bruce, the Lee said, Bruce Lee also told you brick don't hit back. Bruce Lee was real. Hurting. Bruce Lee was real good at pointing out the obvious shit. Yeah, yeah. Of course, brick don't hit back, Bruce. We know Bruce. Of course not. It will hurt him. No, 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 Bruce. Duh, Bruce. No, Brick no, no, back. no, duh, Bruce. How dumb were the people you teaching, Bruce, that you felt that you had to tell them <coughs> Brick don't hit back? You thought they were sitting around waiting on the Brick to respond with a jab or two? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> like, well, we, like, well, we like what the hell was you? We all met people that dumb. Like, we think about these dumb. statements. Like, how dumb were the people that you were teaching, Bruce? You, you, so they that dumb that you got to tell them that the brick don't hit back, but you teaching them a deadly oh. form of martial arts, nigga. Are you sure you want these dumb people walking around knowing how to kill people with a two inch punch? Maybe I don't they know if they're safe. Maybe, maybe, maybe they wanted to those people that life skills. They only good at one thing. Oh, very good. But brick no hit back. No shit. I was hitting the brick to show my strength, I thought. I, I, I didn't think that I was supposed to be thinking that it was going to be a sparring match real quick. The fuck? Oh. That what is if yo, a brick brick brick. be some dumb shit that people be telling. Be saying back in the day, yo. Oh, be thinking they drop a whistle, really. but they really just saying some shit that's like dead ass obvious. Like, yes, nigga, we know. If the brick do hit back, we all need to carry our ass home and go to sleep because go lay down because something well, wrong. This is, this is the trip shit though. Well, if somebody told him that first, like, oh, Bruce, brick don't hit back. And then he threw a brick and be like, yeah, well, brick do hit back, don't Brick <laughs> <laughs> I, I know what happened with Burger. <laughs> 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 Craig from Friday said uh brick hit back. <laughs> oh, my face is so goofy when I laugh. I know what happened to Burger. The come to a digging Burger. <laughs> oh, man. Did we ever oh, tell man. that story on here? What? The Tecumseh story. Oh. I don't think we ever... I think oh, I man. Me, but I don't think y'all ain't never said it up here. <laughs> so if we have never told y'all, Pod Squad... There's a lot of inside jokes that we have from just throughout the years. Uh, some between Face and Pat, some between me and Pat, some between uh, me and Face, some between, like, it, it's just, you know, we all got our own little, like, weird, little quirky, little inside jokes that have happened because we have just been on so many damn adventures. So, oh, man, back, you'll hear sometime we'll be talking about something. And one of us will just be like, I know what happened to Bear Girl. <laughs> To come see Diggenberg. <laughs> so the story behind that, man, um, goes back to high school, man. Uh, 
we maybe 15, 16, and we used to go on these church trips called conventions or whatever. And it basically be like all of the churches uh, from the nation meet up in a city somewhere. And you know what I mean? They have like fellowships and meetings and stuff. And they have like little, uh, like uh, basically like Bible school sessions and stuff for the teenagers and kids and all that shit. So, but basically what basically turned into is a bunch of, a bunch of people getting into debauchery for a week is basically turned into like a uh, religious freak Nick. Um, so back in high school, you know, we used to be basically just wilding. So one year we had the convention and it was in uh, Santa Clara, <laughs> California. And the, se- the, the section of Santa Clara we were in is not very popping. It was very dry. It, it was like a business section. So it was really only two things to do every day. Um, it was either uh, basically like order pizza and walk around the hotels and holler at girls or go up the street to the girls' uh, hotel and hang with them. Or like go up and down and walk the strip and go to these different little food places. It was like little restaurants and stuff up and down this little street. So every day we was basically going to, what was it? <laughs> was it Denny's Face? Was it Denny's or IHOP or? Denny. It was one. Yeah, okay, it was Denny. So uh, it was like the only place that had like decent food on a day to day that we knew like was gonna be pretty consistent. So we would go there every day. And one day we went, man, and it was this. Uh, now, mind you, we're fifteen and sixteen. We wouldn't. Have, none of this would have happened had we been the age we are now and been understanding of stuff. But this is way back in like ninety something. So like. Understand this context, people, before I get into the rest of this. <laughs> Please don't cancel us, okay? Just understand that this is the, the pre-woke <laughs> face and tears. So it was me facing our homeboy, Chris, man. And we go to this place every day. So we one day, we up there at Dennis. We done order some burgers, burgers and fries or whatever. You know, at that age, I don't care where you go. Burgers and fries or ticket tenders and fries is pretty much the standard order. Like, that's just what you're going to get. So um, we sitting there, we waiting on the food or whatever. We sitting there geeking, like we loud as hell. We, you know what I mean? We laughing and joking and shit. Um, and it's this uh, indigenous brother that's over there. And he, <laughs> <laughs> and he wiping the tables off. He like a, a bus boy, I guess you would call it. Whatever. Like he busting this the table <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> yeah, so this indigenous brother was wiping the table down. He was busting the table. And um, so me and Chris sitting there, we looked at the other way. And at this point, like, you know, we had, we, we done learned the white man's uh history. So you know that the only few, it was only a few indigenous names that are at all of stature that they teach you about. They teach you about like Cochise, Tecumseh, uh, and like, what is it, Sitting Bull, Sitting Bull or something like that. Mm-hmm. But there's only like three or four people that they actually teach you about, you know, uh, Pocahontas and, and Squanto, you know what oh, I mean? Like, yeah, you know what I mean? They'll, they'll teach you about everybody. So anyway, the dude wiping the tables down, he keep gritting on us, looking at us bad as hell, right? <laughs> and he's just like, you can tell he annoyed, like, you damn kids over there. So we make up this whole story about this dude in our head, right? And his name is Tecumseh. And he over there talking shit about us, looking at us all bad, right? So we loud, now mind you, like, we 15, 16, so we're much, to us, it's a private conversation. But to Dennis, it probably sounds like we are literally telling this joke to everybody. But we over there weak. Oh, to come sit. We done made up a voice for him and everything. Oh, those damn kids. Ugh. Hey, kids. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we over here geeking, right? So anyway, food comes. Burgers and fries come, right? So we, uh, you know how you prepare your food, you're getting your ketchup and stuff on there, you're salting your pepper, you know what I mean? You're seasoning the food up the way you like it or whatever, whatever, whatever. So we doing that, and 
I can't remember whose burger it was, but somebody had something wrong with their burger. It was like something weird with the burger or something. And it just didn't look right to them. <laughs> so I look over <clears throat> and I'm just like, I know what happened to burger. Tecumseh put dick in burger. <laughs> <laughs> And we were like crying, <laughs> laughing, bro. And for some reason, to this day, like that shit would come out of nowhere. Else. Like to this day, if we were to see our old boy Chris, like if we were to say that, he would probably like break down. Like it's just one of them things that, like, no matter how old it get, it's, it's it shouldn't be this funny still to this day. But <laughs> god damn, to come to. I tell you, boy, some shit just lasts. Stand the test of time. <laughs> That shit, like they want some bread shit. Want some bread? Want some bread? I don't even know why that was. I don't, to this day, I don't know why that's funny. There's nothing about that that should be funny. Like, there's no punchline. There's no moment. It's just, (laughs) it's just literally you asking me, do I want some bread as you hold a a basket of bread? But why is that funny? (laughs) And I sit there and spit Kool Aid out of my nose, mouth, and every other facial orifice at once. It just all sprayed down the table <laughs> in the middle of like uh, somebody anniversary banquet or something at church. It was some special moment for somebody and I'm sitting there at the, <laughs> at the head table <laughs> sneezing Kool-Aid. Because <laughs> this nigga Chris oh, just kept yeah. saying, you want some bread. Hey, you want, hey, you want some bread. You want some bread. You want some bread. I don't know why that was so funny to me. <laughs> The, the dumb shit see. you laugh at, man, the dumb shit you laugh at, period, in life. Because I was about to say when you when you're 15, but then I thought about it, man, that shit funny to me now, and I don't know why. <coughs> oh, man, funny to me. Funny to Boy, me. this bitch crying, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, uh, Pod Squad, now, if you ever out of the restaurant and, some, and somebody's looking at you like they about to fuck your order up, if you get that said order and it don't look right, you know what happened. To come sick, to come sick, but it can <laughs> go back to the good and fuckery. <laughs> yes, back to the good and fuckery. <laughs> hey, we had a forgot we were in the <laughs> Yes, we're still in the middle of a segment. That still happened, oh, folks. Man. That, that actually oh, happened, folks. Man. <laughs> See, sometimes you just got to let stuff breathe, man. You just got to go with it, man, wherever it takes you, man. Now y'all know something new about us that you didn't know before. And you know, you're going to get these little nuggets oh, yeah. from time to time because we've known each other that damn long. That's the funny part. You never know what happens on the good and fuckery. Oh. Could be just listening in on the uh, entertainment news and next thing you know, some indigenous man just put your di- put, put his dick in your burger. I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> I, I personally <laughs> just respect it. Some indigenous man put his dick in your burger. <laughs> that's some fuckery to me, literally. Literally, yeah. that's fuckery. That ain't no mayonnaise. Don't you eat that? That is not no miracle whip. It ain't no damn mouth. That ain't no damn puppy. (laughs) 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 Yeah, Gina talking about something. Oh, that's a cute puppy. (laughs) I like your puppy. (laughs) That ain't no damn puppy. God dang. That nigga was hitting it with punches like that. <laughs> Why was his wrist doing that? <laughs> How did you go and hurt like that? <laughs> he just massaged that wear rat, that Caribbean wear rat. <laughs> oh man. Uh, oh man! I, oh, what, yeah. was the, what was the dude name that came on the live, yo? That was talking about uh, Martin, yo. That was a good time. Oh, um, I'm in. Uh, yes, I'm in. Yeah. yeah, that was funny. It was a good time. Oh All right. man, my bad. Fuck Go ahead me. with the good and fuck with man. Oh, okay, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh yeah. Good. Will Smith is playing Venus and Serena's with uh, Serena Williams' father, and um, what's the movie name? King Richard. I'm trying to remember what Venus. Let me see what Venus and Serena's father look like. Okay, <coughs> go, go ahead, though. King Richard. Oh, that, that's pretty much you it. Said that, King that, Richard. Was the drink. Yeah, the name is King Richard. Oh, their their father's name was uh, 
Richard. Oh yeah, it was Richard Williams. I get it now. Let me see what this nigga look like. Yeah, I was just scrolling on Instagram and then I can see that. Up. I can see that he not as dark as that man, but like <clears throat> there are some features. That I I can see him pulling that off. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, and you know, Will Smith is good at you know, like he played Muhammad Ali. He played uh, so I, don't know. I know he played somebody. Take Muhammad Ali. I'll think of it later. But shoot. I was scrolling on Instagram, and next thing you know, Will Smith Instagram popped up and he said some big speech about, like, you know, the the honor of acting is 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 playing something that's meaningful or something like that. Whatever. And I was like, who are you playing now? Man. First I thought he was what is it? Arthur Ash? No, he ain't actually playing. <laughs> Arthur Ash. <laughs> <laughs> that would yo, that would no, nah, he shouldn't play off the ass. I'm trying to think. Yeah. Uh damn, who could play off the ass? Maybe Charles Gambino should be off the ass. Like, be no, be off the ass. Oh, that would, yeah. yeah, that would be dope. Yeah. Like off the ass was like uh was like the Tiger Woods of the 80s. Yeah. With the tennis, <clears> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Shout out to Virginia. We breed nothing but greatness. Greatness. Just what Bask we in it. Bask in the Virginia. Nigga, did you just rub uh, your nipples? No, nah, I went like this. I don't nipples? know what to do with my hands. Oh, all right. I, it looked like you was like... It's far away, man. This, this. Shirts here, hands up here. Stop here. it. Okay? Tell a friend. You're rubbing the imaginary titties. <laughs> <laughs> got dang tears talk about man cleavage the other the other episode hey man I'm telling you show your man cleavage to your woman watch what happens <laughs> more relationship tips from tears yeah <laughs> but the other thing I was going to say yes um, back to the good and fuckery again Richard Williams that's like two first names put together. Like, never trust a matter with two first names. <laughs> Richard Williams. Two Richard first name is Williams. Huh? V Venus and Serena Williams. Names. Yeah, that's like two first names. But William, you know, William could be uh, like the first Master, name. If, Master William. Yeah, like if somebody's <laughs> short for Will Willie. Uh, Bill, I don't know how William turns into Bill, but Willie that's Walker. Some... I ain't never figured that shit out. It's like I didn't figure out how Richard turns into Dick. <laughs> oh, you know what? I saw. Uh, it still didn't make no sense, but it was an actual history behind. I that. know. How, I know Did how it happens it? to constantly <laughs> put Dick in Richard. <laughs> All throughout history. <laughs> it's a long line to come say. <laughs> yeah, damn to come. I'm to come say. And my ah! and my daddy before me was to come say. <laughs> and my grandfather before him. No, was shut up. <laughs> shut up. I come from a long side line to come say. I had to come say the the twenty second. It's like it's like the Phantom. Yo, the, he said, oh, do like the Black history. Panther. <laughs> to come say the Black Panther of his tribe. <laughs> and when he when he goes seek justice, he puts Dick in. <laughs> <laughs> In order for you to get the name to come say there's a fight that you have to go against all the cousins in your family. And whoever hey, wins look. comes to say. Hey, look. Hey, you said all throughout history. To come say been playing. Uh, this time on the Good and Fuckery episode thirty-seven. 
Uh, oh. oh yeah. I had one cry. Laugh until the crash. Oh my god. Oh, oh god, man. bro. Yo. <laughs> Yo. Yo. I just realized this, yo. What has to be a good 22 years later, man. That nigga name was to come say. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Oh, uh, God, the revelations yo. of when you when you our grow show, older. Our show has definitely taken a turn for the worse, yo. Subscriber, we lost last week. I understand, yo. I get <laughs> but I've never had so much fun in my life. <laughs> oh my God, bro. Yo, that's funny. It was one game 500. I can't believe that shit. That is hilarious. All right, go ahead with the good and fuckery, bro. All right. <laughs> Let's get it together. All right. So, boy. <laughs> All right. so I'm going to start the rumor. I'm going to start the rumor. Okay. Uh -oh. The rumor is I think Jay-Z is going to release something soon. Like an album? Like musically? Album, maybe a track. Maybe, you know what I'm saying? We already seen, we already heard, we, some of y'all might have missed it, but that verse off of um, Kanye's album that he didn't drop, Donda, or whatever. So, um, but I say this because Nas is releasing King's Disease 2, August 6th. And anytime King, Nas- oh, drops, Hold on, hold on, hold on. What, what, what? Huh? King, King's for G's. King's Disease. King's for G's. King's disease. King's it's disease. Like, okay. Yeah. Gotcha, King's gotcha, disease. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, King's disease two. Okay. Because last when did year. That, when did the first one come out? Okay, yeah, I, was about to say, I don't remember. The first. La last year. Last year. He got a Grammy for it. He beat Freddie Gibbs. Freddie Gibbs got pissed. And then, not really, but then he rapped over uh, one of Nas's beats. And it was a great song, actually. I like Freddie Gibbs. But yeah, King's disease <laughs> two. It's coming out uh, August 6th. And um, anytime Nas <coughs> drops, Jay-Z drops something. Mm. Every single time. Every what? single time. So, either way, Nas fans is happy. I, I won't be mad. Happy. As a Jay-Z fan, I definitely will not be upset at all. Come on with it. I'll take, mm -hmm. I'll take some good jig of music <coughs> right now. That'll work for me. Yeah. Come on, ho. Yeah. Feed the streets, bro. And uh, then uh, other news, Cardi B's Bodak Yellow makes YouTube history. The 2017 track is the fastest solo single by a female rapper to reach 1 billion views. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that, that was kind of crazy. No, that's pretty yeah. impressive. And I'm going to top the good and fuckery off with a topic that you wanted to talk about but you didn't uh, exactly get to it on the live. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm on Team Royce. I like Royce okay. the 5'9". Okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I okay. like Royce the 5'9". Okay. Now, it all started when Ransom and RJ Payne um, yes. Yes. said that they were the best ever. And I, um, as far as bar for bar rappers, RJ Payne and Ransom, I, I'm not going to lie. I've been on the low enjoying Ransom's random releases. I know a lot of people might not know, but Ransom, um, he was a rapper in the DJ Clue days or whatever. He had a group named 18. It was another dude named Hitchcock. I think they uh, got into a disagreement, so Ransom is on his own, but Ransom is one of those spitters, man. Like Every time I hear Ransom, I never heard like a Ransom verse, even back then in the 2000 days that I didn't like. Matter of fact, I listened to the 18 just for Ransom verses. Matter of fact, so for you young kids that have no idea who Ransom is, Tim and Joe Budden are the reason that now y'all have this internet pull up. Let me record myself while I go pull up on my ops type vibe. Mm -hmm. like, they was pulling up on each other, and people was getting smacked on front porches and all kinds of stuff on on YouTube. 
back when YouTube was still in its infancy and it was because of Ransom and them. DJ Vlad actually got his whole career off of following uh, Joe Budden and Ransom and their beef. So, yeah, and that's, they, 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 they kind of like the, the like soldier Vlad, boy of the YouTube stuff. <clears throat> and that's why Joe Budden don't like Vlad now. Well, he's probably part of it. This well, is, all this all is. the other fuckery Vlad does, but yeah. Yes. <clears throat> um, yes. But yeah, I I feel like every rapper, especially if you are bar for bar, plus like spitting, you know, rapper that or, or whatever, should feel like they're the best rapper, period. But yep. then Royce, Royce came in and he was like, he basically was like, to who? You know, and he was like, do y'all check all the boxes or whatever? So I don't know. Can you please tell me exactly what he means by that? I have my own thoughts about what he means, <clears throat> but he never explained what he means. So do you, is that a standard term or something I, that I know? No, it's not, it's not a standard term. It's, it's, it's some, it's basically something he probably said on the fly to explain, Hey, I did, I got these amount of accolades or what I, when boxes I, does Royce check? <clears throat> That's I'm still doing. trying to figure that out. What exact boxes does he check? I know he asked that of everybody else, but like, if we talk about accolades, like, I don't know that he's some um, I would I, I, rapper I, like that. that. Like the the best term for it for this because this this is all about underground, like, rapidy rap hip hop. Right. That's what I'm saying. When you talking about so, that, was he even the best in his group? Um, it all depends. Like, it all depends when it comes to Slaughterhouse, it all depends on what. Because I feel like at one point of time, each one of them will have a verse that might outshine the rest of them or whatever in Slaughterhouse. Like, I would say, if he's not the I'm best. I'm talking about one, consistently, like. Consistently? Yeah, everybody can have a, a, a moment where shit line up, <laughs> right? And I have some a moment of greatness. I'm talking about like consistently. Was he the one that was like look to like, oh, you're gonna have the verse on this song most likely. Um, to me, he wasn't. But I'm trying to see like more like what the public perception might have been or what other. People I would say Vo Royce is, is one of those ones where I would feel like other rappers would feel some pressure, like um, not necessarily be afraid to be on a track with them, but they know that he's going to come with a certain amount of performance, so I'm going to come with a certain amount of performance. Because he has, I would say, <clears throat> he's gotten his music has gotten better as far as topics and content over the past couple of years or whatever. Um, if As far as like staying on the beat or writing a beat or whatever, like, I, I believe when he wants to, because there is some times where he wants to put in so many syllable bars at one time that I feel like it doesn't ride the beat like it should or whatever. But I'm not going to Is lie. that I, one I, of the boxes <laughs> that you should be checking, though? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, that's... What are that's, these boxes? Let that's me the know. One thing. That's, that's the one thing I need to figure out myself because it's yeah. not like he posted anything on Instagram and like put up a list that says hey these are the boxes you know what I'm saying to check it. if you're gonna <clears throat> come out here and you're gonna start talking about boxes and all that and challenging people on them thinking that they the best and all that then my thing is this prove yours don't keep mm -hmm. talking shit rap nigga you I would say on, you would have been on 32,000 <clears throat> live streams whining because these niggas jumping me. Nigga, it's rap. Rap, nigga. You the best mm -hmm. in rap, nigga. Mm -hmm. I Stop do, trying I do to say find it. help and rap, nigga. You had a chance to rap. You made a song. The shit did not go as go off as crazy as you thought it was going to go. Niggas came back because you were still talking shit on lives. These live streams are the problem. It, it's these Let's yeah. hang out on Instagram live and talk shit to each other. Until I think it gets get annoying. It situation weird or whatever. Yeah, because now you put me on, on front street in front of everybody. Now I got to talk bigger shit than I normally would, etc. But mm. rap, nigga. 
They challenge you on rap. Everybody done rapped at you. And and I don't care what you said. I ain't heard nothing that nobody said that was that damn disrespectful that we can't keep it rap. Mm-hmm. So don't start like he said, <clears throat> that's what pissed me off. He started talking like he wanted to, you know, I don't know how to take it. And you know, I, I usually like man, ain't nobody trying to fight you and all that, man. Them niggas rapping. Rap, nigga. Mm-hmm. Stop ducking the well, rap smoke in the rap fade. So out of the because it was three involved, and right. I, I still to this day don't understand where. Like I probably got to look into the lives again to figure out where the Lupe fall into it or whatever. In the oh, conversation. so but Lupe came in that- on one of the lives because uh, Royce was talking. They were talking about who was nice and all that. Or some and somehow or another Roy's name got mentioned on some stuff, but it won't on no crazy shit. It was just like on some I might not agree with somebody said about Royce. I mean, uh, what about somebody said about Lupe or whatever? So then uh-huh. Lupe came in with like a uh, with no shirt on, yelling and cursing and acting all crazy. Like you knew it was still you knew it was still about rap, but that was when the energy first shifted. And then mm-hmm. what happened was the, uh, there was a live with Mickey Fax and uh, Royce. And during mm-hmm. that live, Royce kept asking Mickey, do you check boxes? Do you check boxes? And this was after, this was like the live where Mickey was kind of explaining to Royce that uh, Lupe won't know no, like, I'm trying to, like, no rah-rah shit like that. Like, it was, you know, <coughs> just rap or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, so somewhere in that conversation with Mickey and Royce, it started to get a little more weird because it started to sound like Royce was like downplaying Mickey's career and Mickey's abilities, right? Because mm-hmm. asked him, but do you check boxes? And, and everybody in the chat was like, well, what do you mean? Like what, mm-hmm. check what boxes? Like Mickey, Mickey dope as hell. He wanted the best, like, he wanted them elite spitters. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that ain't even no question. So. Anyway, it kept going, kept going. And basically, uh, it got to the point where Royce told Mickey, well, rap then. Basically, like, telling him from what I, if when I'm watching it, which is why I think Mickey assumed the same thing. I got from that, oh, well, go make your, go make your record then and show me that you check boxes. Uh-huh. Mickey did that. But Mickey from yeah, New did. York. And Mickey from the, the cloth of, like, if we're going to rap, then we're going to have, we're going to battle on wax. So Mickey battled on wax. I don't see what he said, nothing crazy, disrespectful or nothing. He just he chewed your he just chewed your ass up lyrically. Like nigga, Mickey went in on that shit. And I think Royce is just salty because <laughs> he know that if he go in there, he ain't gonna make nothing that that far. It ain't gonna I, be that. I don't think um I was trying to say. I don't think Royce on the first one took took stuff seriously because like that beat was too chill of a beat and i feel like royce is on some i don't feel like royce is on some battle chip pretty much just in general just making well, music or what he better get it <clears throat> on a, but at the same kick time, his ass so well i was gonna ask which out of the three have you heard um you heard lupe's and royce version right also right because i know you heard mickey yes listen all right so which one did you like the best out of the three? Mickey. Um, Mickey. I think Lupe's wasn't <clears throat> as hard as Mickey's. Royce's wasn't really a battle record to me. It was more just like a rapidly rap record, but it wasn't like, yes. uh, I'm going <clears throat> at any kind of Um, I like Mickey's because it was direct. It was rapidly rap and the flows. <clears throat> it still was a good song. Like, mm-hmm. It was good music as opposed to just I'm battling, but the song sucks. You know what I mean? Like I'm saying some hard shit, but nobody don't nobody want to ride to this. Like I would bump that nigga <clears throat> shit. I was rocking with that shit. You feel me? Um mm-hmm. I will also say Mickey has the line of the three songs for me, which yeah, I ain't heard another line like that in a minute. So I really fuck mm-hmm. with that. So that uh what is it? Here come the cliffhanger, like like Cosby Closet. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That yeah. is fucking. It's right there. It's it's right in front of yeah. everybody, but for thirty some <clears throat> years, forty years, and nobody ever popped that out. 
that I love those type of bars. Like it's right there when you hear it. You're like, oh my God, how did nobody ever say that? But he said it. Oh no, I love it. I love those jokes. I love those bars. Well, Yo, that one of those that God, the light bulb God. hit your head type bars. Yeah, that shit was hard. <clears throat> so, I also yeah, like Mickey. I also like listening to songs that I've been listening to forever. And then I listen, and it's been a while since I listened to them. And then I listened to it again in my adult years, and I catch yeah. something that I just didn't catch before. It, it hit a little different <clears throat> now that you've been through some stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think um, I have a Royce bias because I always liked Royce since like that scary movie song back in high school with him and Eminem, pretty much. I and I always it. liked like his bars or whatever. That so was the song I like that it. got me into Eminem actually. True. Yep. And it was another one of them. Um boom with him and Premier. Uh boom to you too. Boom. Guess who stepped in the room? Uh, it's right. um um it's a Premier beat and and Royce was on it. This was like the first time I heard Royce with his own song or whatever because it's like early in his career. And he, um, what's that first verse he said? I'm the verbal I spit. I bombatomically. Not, that was Inspector Deck, man. <clears throat> what is that? Uh, I'm the verbal spit Smith Wesson. I come through with slick spit and quick wit. They'll split a split second. I never heard anybody say I split a split second. So from then on, I was like, all right, I'm kind of hooked. <laughs> I, I don't know how your wit can split a split second, though. That don't, I don't get it. It's just the way you put it as far as the bar. See, you know? see, that's what I mean by Royce. Like you put all them syllables together for it not to make sense. Like, yeah, the rhymes, the rhyme pattern, the rhyme scheme, the uh, the amount of syllables you pieced up is dope. But where's the meaning behind it? Like, I'd rather you do all of that and then at least say something at the end. Like at the end of that, I should come away with something that still makes sense. It's an entendre or whatever, but it still makes sense. Like. Entendre should make sense both ways, not just the one way you had to try to squeeze it in there for the punchline. But that's my opinion. You know, that's just how I be. Looking You're at not going to make me not like that bar anymore. I like that line. He said, split a split second. No, I'm you, one of the basic people. <laughs> man, you, you, you love that line, bro. I'm, one of I'm not mad people. at you. And I'm like, oh, nobody else has ever said anything like I can split. That shit don't that make sense. What the fuck they gonna say it for? Oh man, I like I like, like superhero like shit. <laughs> I like. I'm, gonna, I'm going to split a split second. I'm sorry, Tiz, and what? this is where we're gonna dif- differentiate. What does that mean? I don't. I, I this this is where we differentiate. I like when rappers say superhero shit. I I I get I get it that all right. We like music where. We, we learn, I love life songs. I love life songs where, you know, you relate to the song. But sometimes I just want to hear somebody say some crazy shit. That, like, I, I, that's, I want to, I want to see if somebody say some crazy shit, some shit that, sometimes I want somebody to say some unbelievable shit. Of course, I know that this guy can't punch somebody through a mouth. But see, punching I'll somebody through a mountain, I get that though. That's different. Mm-hmm. That's hyperbole. Mm-hmm. That's hyperbole. What does split a split second mean? That's what I, I don't can get. Do like, something impossible. I, get... I would probably have to talk That's to not about it. That's not impossible. It just don't matter. <laughs> With respect, man. <laughs> We ain't gonna get it. We, you know, this is one of the moments where, all right, we just not our taste. I don't get it. Not, it ain't saying? even about taste. I'm just trying to figure out what does that mean. <laughs> Maybe it makes sense if you hear it with the song or whatever. But anyway, well, I'll, let me go back to what we were talking about before we, we drift. Um, Lupe, I didn't enjoy so much, but I respect Lupe lyrically. But I just didn't enjoy that song too much. He sounded like he just got a little too emotional over it. And I don't know what they had gone through with their podcast or whatever, or how he felt with the podcast and whatnot, because I felt like that was that, a lot of that got real. Into it. Yeah, because yeah, they ended the podcast. They totally 
they totally Joe Rory mauled the podcast after that. So yes, <laughs> yeah. So that was cool, and I think I like Mickey's jokes just because it wasn't no drama in it, and it was just all performance. I mean, he his impersonation of R.J. Payne was I thought it was R. <laughs> I thought he got R.J. Payne on the track at first, pretty much. I like agree, agree. When he was attempting to do ransom. Yeah. It just sounded like, to me, it didn't sound like an impersonation of Ransom. It just sounded like you just rap it to me. Right, or right, whatever. right, right. I right. feel like, I feel like, okay, you probably word for word written down or whatever and performance wise probably said it the same way, but Ransom voice is, I think Ransom voice is the, um, deal breaker on that like if anybody else ran ran um i can't even talk shit what am i trying to say if, if anybody, anybody else does ransom's voice rhyme like ransom it's just going to sound like somebody rapping or whatever I got you, ran, I got you. Rap, it's his rapping. voice that sells the that sells his yeah bars more. exactly exactly I got you. and not necessarily his voice sells it but it's like a cherry on top of what is already a good thing you know what i'm saying it's what like, gives it the, that final oomph yeah like that exactly. pizzazz like oh that's the yeah ooh. it was good like you, that, that'll take it to great yeah like a lot of times with rap it, it's all the voice sometimes it's like voice does it, matter because you like, sound like that dude that uh gator girl put us on to that time the ar or whatever that man <laughs> i don't care what he said that that's not gonna go mm-mm, mm-mm. he's gonna Grammy next year uh <laughs> Yeah, for a best comedy album. <clears throat> but yeah, I'll be winning one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like some it's some rappers that like I respect them like lyrically or whatever mm-hmm. when I just like listen to them, but I'm not always going to them first. Um like for example, Talib Kweli. I I respect them. It's some songs that I actually like from him, but I can't listen to his voice all the time. I just can't. I I can't listen to him all I the time. It's like why you go, why you say that? It, it's like sometimes when I if I want to hear somebody rap hard, I want to hear that anger in his voice. He don't sound like even when he has anger. Not in enough his aggression voice, there for you. Yeah, it's not but, enough aggression to me. And it's too somebody probably flip what I say and call it a diss, but. Yeah, niggas know what voices sound like. I get what you mean. <laughs> and I get what you mean. It's like, I don't, don't want to hear somebody who always sound peaceful. Sometimes I want somebody yeah. who's by the, by the rage. And I think that's I think that's the effect that I have with Lupe. Now, my brother probably mm. mad at me. Mm-hmm. Lupe is like one of his favorite rappers too. But it's like, I don't know. I don't go to Lupe for aggression. Like I go that's to real. Lupe. And then and if I listen to him with aggression, it's like, it, it don't, it don't. The voice don't, don't, don't have the conviction yeah. in it. Yeah, yeah. Like when you, when you hear, if you want to hear aggressive rap, you, you want to be able to feel that shit to the point that, like, you would say that. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever. Like, I, I feel like sometimes if, if, if certain rappers write their aggressive rap and somebody else said it, you would. You would like got it, it more. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah, I feel. And that's not some people are better as ghostwriters, and and they don't know it. Dude, I felt the same way about certain raps that Gilly, I made. Gilly the Kid was like that. Like when he did songs, it didn't go. But if he gave it to somebody else, mm-hmm. yeah, you got you on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Man, I but feel that. Mickey, Mickey facts. He still did his thing though. And Mickey, I it's I say he's one of those people I don't expect a whack rhyme from. Yeah, oh, oh. I ain't, I ain't ever heard a whack whack verse from him. Mm-hmm. But That's real. I, I think I think Royce's biggest, I think Royce's um, biggest fault or whatever flaw is that sometimes you got to do way too much work to get the bar, and then sometimes it's good to work to get the bar. Like like I said earlier, like you know you listen to songs from a long time ago and you. Like you hear something 
you know, like you didn't hear it before or whatever. Right. But sometimes it's like, all right, sometimes I just want to listen to music. I don't want to have to like examine every freaking bar. I just want that chunk to hit me. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I don't need to pull out that encyclopedia <clears throat> for every song. Sometimes I just want to easy listening. Yeah, some just, I don't want to know. Just, just, just spoon feed me on this one. Don't make me work for it. Yeah, I don't want to know every piece of social media, uh, like social event to just figure out the bar sometimes. So, I mean, sometimes I like that. If it, you know, and sometimes I don't. But Right. Hey. And this is me with a Royce bias, you know, no, I saying get that pretty much. That was one of the things that Mickey actually pointed out in his song, like in Ray's mm. that. That Royce yeah, he said it's okay. Current events together and shit. Mm -hmm. yeah, he did yeah. say that shit. But hey, some people, it, 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 sometimes at the end of the day, you just got to be like, hey, that's that rapper style. And that yeah. rapper's been doing it for that long. It works for that rapper. That might not be your cup of tea. And growing up with music, I'm like, hmm, that's, that's the way I listen to music now. Like, uh, this is my cup of tea right now. This is not your cup of tea right now. This is mm -hmm. your cup of tea right now. This is not my cup of tea right now. So. Right, right, right. But yeah, that's my rant on that. Face, <laughs> face you over there. <laughs> I'm just looking at him by a tea. Oh, okay. But your cup of tea and his cup of tea and what's not and what he is, and I ain't got no cups of tea, so I mean, hey, it is what it is with me. That's right. You got a cup of tea, man. That's that 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 good outcast down south rap cup of tea. Oh no, that ain't a cup. That's a big old gallon of jug, man. That is a that's, that's down a, that's south. A they jug, got the gallon jug of sweet tea. Yeah, that's a <laughs> what is it? Uh, what's that thing? I can't think of nothing right now. What is the name of that chicken place? They they always have like the jug of teas up there. Hardest. It, the Hardys did too, but I don't Bo, Bo, Bo Jangles? Bo Jangles did too. Yep. Popeyes? Pretty much all of them got a gallon of tea. KFC? Every, every southern, yeah, I just needed every one. Every southern chicken place don't say you have gallon of tea. Yeah. Actually, a big jug of tea would be a good would hit right about now. Actually, now that I think <laughs> a big jug of tea would hit about any time of the day or year, night, whatever. Like, just, Tea just sweet tea just good as hell all the time. If it's made right. Yeah, but yeah, are, and you can't like people can't fuck it up though. Tea. When that tea don't give me no that tea be tasting old. Yeah. Yeah, and that sour taste to it. Whatever. Uh, sour. Like I don't like, know what kind of tea you drinking, but you need to get that back for real. That, yeah. That's no, nah, uh, like you it like it has like, like that bitter taste. That's yeah, why I'm bitter taste. Bitter taste. What'd you say for that? That's that tea to be all the way at the end with the grinds in it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But people no, be nobody making, want no gritty tea. That diabetic <laughs> barely have sugar in the tea or whatever. No, tea. I, I, I need the sweet tea where you like put a gallon of sugar, uh, 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 like the bag of sugar in the bottom of that big barrel. Then you pour the tea in while it's hot, and you stir mm. in another bag of sugar as you pour the hot tea in. Mm -hmm. That's how you got to make it. I'm telling you, if you do it like that, it's going to be the perfect sweetness every single time. I know because I used to work at Waffle House, and I used to make the best sweet tea. The, the whole night shift crew used to, like, that first rush, right when I'd be getting off, when y'all used to come scoop me up and we about to go to mm. a party and shit, mm. right then, that first rush of people that be coming in, boy, they used to be like, man, your damn TV good as hell. <laughs> Niggas be mad as hell when that shit run out. <laughs> they, fuck, they fuck around and get there like, at, you know, like one o'clock in the morning when that shit gone. They be like, damn it. We didn't got that damn night shift tea. I don't, I don't understand people that don't like sweet tea, man. I don't understand them. <laughs> I don't understand Some them people at don't all. like tea at all. Some yeah. people don't like coffee at all. I think it's just like certain flavors, you know, is our, our acquired tastes. My stomach don't like coffee. I know that much. 
Jesus. Uh, man, I'm telling you, and that's the thing. Like, I don't mind the taste. I actually appreciate it because it does actually, you know, the caffeine does actually work to wake me up or whatever. Holy love, God. But, but that shit, like, it wake up my bowels for the rest of the day. Like, I drink one cup in the morning at 8 a.m. and, like, it's 8 p.m. And I'm, and I'm still I'm still letting them fire. Like, you know, you know, God damn, man. Like, fart rockets just blowing off all night. Like, I gotta get gassy as hell. <laughs> I'm walk. I'm walking through the halls of my job, just letting them off. Toot toot. Oh, oh beep beep. beep, beep. <laughs> I'm eating that shit. <laughs> 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 yeah, then I'm back and forth to the bathroom all day. Stomach feeling funny. Then I start sweating and shit. That should be having me all like, like, uh, like when you drink a, a energy drink and it don't do right with your system, and that shit had you like jittery a little bit. Like that should be. Like oh, that's that. I be getting all hot all drink. of a sudden and sweating and shit. Nah, Yo, five hour energy drink does that, and that that shit is the devil. I don't care what anybody say. Yeah, I'm pretty sure um, that shit is a uh, some rocket fuel or something. Yo, I don't know what it is, but I know if you got anxiety or nerve problems, do not drink five hour energy drink. It does not do good with your soul. That shit it like, does not. Shit like it'll wake you up. But man, I'm worried. I'm in in. Drinking that joint, be worried about stuff I don't even normally be worried about. Like all the time. Like, hope, nah, this, nah. hope this gum wrapper don't get me in trouble for littering. That stuff is the devil. You know how the, the extra, the extra healthy, I'm vegan people or whatever warn you about stuff pretty much. I'm 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 being one of those with five hour energy drink, man. There's nah. something about that. Uh Y'all, the, the way people should be scared about vaccines is the way the way people are scared about Ooh, vaccines. No, the no, way they no. Be scared. I can't have that piece of candy. It, it, it that, that that has a chemical in it that kills butterflies in Guatemala. Mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. telling you right now, y'all should be like that with five hour energy drink, cause oh, I'm messing and, that shit. I'm good on that. Yeah, that's a uh. But yeah, that's my rant on five hour energy drink. I don't mess with nothing that when you that it, it say cherry is the flavor, but when you taste it, it don't taste shit like cherries. It tastes like yeah, that's what well, it that shit tastes, tastes like. like battery acid or something, or or, or like they medicine, like with a something that you of drink some type of for recreation should not taste like medicine. They made that junk with the scarecrow's fear gas. That's what they made that stuff. <laughs> And this is, I don't do nothing but make you all antsy. That's clever as hell, like scarecrows, fear gas. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> oh, no. That was pretty good there. All right. And that was a good as fuck for y'all. <laughs> Woo! Good and fuck around. Um, I think we really ended that a long time ago, but yeah, because I ain't saying yeah yet.